All right, folks, and welcome to our stock analysis workshop on Shopify. I'm actually very excited to be introducing uh, this analysis on Shopify because this one was one of the best performing stocks during the previous um, up cycle that we had on the market and is also one of the worst performing stocks. So we're going to go and dive deeper into the technicals to look at the story behind Shopify, which is, you know, our usual process of understanding the situation, then reviewing their trading multiples, the financials, uh, looking at comms so that we can ultimately determine is this a buy or sell, right? Or should we avoid? And part of the analysis that we're going to perform, it's our discounted cash flow, uh, preliminary sales multiple valuation. And then, of course, we're going to look at the entire analysis performed by one of our interns in our program, in our analyst prep program. And lastly, you know, why are we doing this? All of this is really meant to improve financial literacy. And also, for those of you that are in the analyst prep program, is to improve your earnings potential, to address in the income inequality gap where most of our students that graduate the program, um, after they finish school, they're making six figures. Compare that to the national average, which is about $58,000 for a recent college graduate. So this is why we do what we do to improve financial literacy. Okay. And then in addition to that, you know, we get to see what the valuation is. And if you have a portfolio, if you want to test your own ideas, now you have um, a, a reference point or a framework of thinking on how to perhaps apply a technical analysis skill set. So with that being said, let's dive right into the material. So the first thing I want to start off is with a stock face model. This is a good reference point for you to understand how the stock market works, how the life cycle of individual stocks behave. Once you understand this, it can kind of give you a big picture on looking at any company and determining, are you at the beginning of a major cycle or are you buying at the top of a cycle? Okay, this is very, very important. If you want to get more information on the stock face model, you can simply just go to our website and pull up the information. Here's our website under the article section. Okay, we've created an entire article with more insight or more explanation on what each phase represents, what is the market psychology. And we are using also uh, several examples uh, in this stock face model. So make sure you come to our website, read this. I think it's a great resource um, to give you an understanding of how the stock market works and what to anticipate when you're investing in individual stocks, okay? So now that we've got that out of the way, so it's important to understand where are we right now in the economic cycle? The Federal Reserve just announced that they are raising their Fed funds rate. And this was uh, fresh out of the wire. If you see here, CNBC have posted an article on what the Fed just recently decided to do. They raised interest rate by 75 basis points. So this brings the interest rate benchmark to around 225 to 250. Okay. And this is all due to inflation. So you have to under, understand the economic, the global macroeconomic forces that is dictating the stock market and the environment that we are in. So we are in a rising interest rate environment. And you can see that right here. Now, this coincides with the stock face model that I have listed up here. Okay. In periods, and this is very important, in periods where you have rising interest rates, market cycles. Typically, is not that beneficial for the stock market unless you're focusing on individual sectors. So some sectors will benefit when you have a rise in interest rate cycle. Some sectors are not going to do so well. When the Fed begins to lower interest rates, the same apply during a declining interest rate cycle. Some sectors will perform better than others. And now we're experiencing, you know, we experienced it from 2016 to 2018. Then we had COVID. And now we're experiencing again, maybe from 2022 to probably 2024, if we continue down this path, then we're going to get to a period where the economy could not handle higher interest rates. 
And then we might be faced in a scenario where the Fed will begin to reduce rates again. In this situation, in a declining rate market, tech stocks usually tend to outperform. A good example of that is Shopify. Just look at the performance of Shopify, right? Especially when we started to lower interest rates during COVID. It's all this period right here, okay? It's all this period. And once we started to go into an interest rate hike cycle, the stock basically started to decline, right? So that means that there is less liquidity in the market. So investors that ended up probably buying this stock up here are probably upside down by 90 or 80 percent of their position. So the question is, is now a time to buy and maybe ride the next wave to the upside? So that's the big question that we're trying to answer. And to answer that question, we need to apply some analysis. We have to look at the cash flows of the business. We have to look at the competition. We have to look at their financial profile picture. And then, of course, perform other types of financial analysis or valuation, like a DCF analysis or a comparable company analysis. Okay. Right underneath this chart, we have some preliminary analysis that was done by one of our analysts in the analyst prep program. You can see that the blue chart represents the share price of Shopify, and this is split adjusted. They did a 10 for one uh, stock split last month, or I believe it was this month. And now the stock, you know, you take the old stock price and divide it by 10, and this will give you the current share price. So as of April 22nd, the stock was trading at $48. Okay. The low valuation range that our analysts arrived to was $78, which means that the stock is undervalued, folks. The high valuation range is $114. But what needs to occur in order for the stock of Shopify to come back and trade within its valuation range? So there's a couple of things that need to happen, of course. They need to probably report better than expected quarterly earnings. Sales growth has to be growing. The company has to be profitable. They need to be generating free cash flow. And they need to show that they're still executing and growing their market share in an interest-raising environment. This is very important for those of you that are interested or even considering taking a new position on Shopify and hold this stock maybe for the next three to four years. Okay, And then, of course, what can the potential return be on Shopify? So this is all preliminary analysis, and then we're going to go through, all, through our own analysis right now to determine is this undervalue, overvalue, and or should we avoid. Now, here's a short break. If you're enjoying our content, don't forget to visit our website, RomeroMentoring.com, and check out our starter analyst programs where you'll learn financial modeling, investment analysis, valuation, and develop the skills professional analysts apply on the job each day. In addition to that, you'll have access to our platform and exclusive access to content relating to investing, stock analysis, opinion, and much more. Join our growing analyst community and level up your skills today. Now back to our content. So let's look at comps. How do they stack up to their peer group? And when you look at their peer group, we have Workday, ServiceNow, Twitter, OpenText, I believe this is in a broad company, um, Iden, Salesforce, Autodesk, GoDaddy, Lightspeed, and Hotspot. So many of these are cloud service online businesses that are direct competitor to Shopify. Look at the trading multiples, okay? When we look at revenue, they're pretty much in line the industry. 6.7, the mean and medium, 6.9 to 6.2, okay? Uh, what about an EBITDA basis? Look at this, NM. When you typically see NM in comps, it means that the stock or the, the company is producing negative EBITDA. So we don't include it. So here are two other companies that have a negative EBITDA. In terms of earnings per share, the same applies. They have a negative earnings per share. So here we have non-meaningful. But at least you could see where the industry is currently trading at. For those of you that are in the analyst program, whenever you are evaluating a company from a comparable analysis standpoint, 
if you are using LTM and you are faced with this example where the company has negative EBITDA or PE or earnings, you would look at one to two years number. You will look at forward numbers, okay? You will probably look at 2023 or 2024 EBITDA and earnings per share numbers. So that's one way to solve um, this uh, challenge from a valuation standpoint whenever you're faced in a situation where the company has negative earnings, okay? Now, I want to look at the profitability of the industry. Here we go, okay? The profitability of the industry. So on a gross margin basis, high gross margin business, obviously most of these companies are software, online e-commerce platforms. Uh, on an EBITDA basis, you can see that Lightspeed and HubSpot are negative. I'm just going to remove these two. I'm going to type here NM because I want to extrapolate those numbers. I don't want it to impact or influence my mean and median. So on an EBITDA basis, 11% to 13%. And Shopify, you can see here, has negative EBITDA and EBIT margins on an LTM basis. Okay. Um, I think many of these companies are still, you know, fresh come not all of them, but some of these companies are fresh companies. They probably been open on the market trading maybe for the last five or six years. Um, and probably once they reach maturity, which could probably come six, seven years from now, their EBITDA margins will improve while their net income revenue growth will decline. So this is again, part of the normal life cycle of businesses. You start with an idea, you have the growth cycle periods, then you have a period of maturity, and then you have a period of business decline. Um, so from what I'm seeing right now, this EBITDA margin, I can expect this to expand. So there's really not much that I can con uh, conclude from just looking at these comps from Shopify, because I already know on an EBITDA base, on an LTM basis, last 12 months, they're generating negative earnings. On a revenue standpoint, their sales multiple, it's in line the industry, but this is tech. And tech usually tends to be punished severely after a boom cycle and when we are entering a interest rate rising cycle. That's what you get to experience it, to experience here, right? And that's exactly what you got to see here with the stock price, okay? But we need to be forward looking. What are the earnings gonna look like in 2022, 2023, in 2024. So this leads me now to my next tab, which is the financial performance of the company. And here we have just a Snapchat on their income statement. So we have revenue, we have their gross profit margin, we have their EBITDA and EBITDA margins, EBIT and EBIT margins, net income, and of course, earnings per share. Pay very close attention to the rate of growth. Right. And I also listed it right here on this graph just so that it's a little bit easier to read um, illustratively. So from 2018 to 2021, right? If I look at my chart, you could see that sales year over year growth for 2018 was 59%, then for 2019, 47%. And then we have a major increase in 2020. This was because of the stay-at-home economy. We had mandatory lockdowns um, and everyone was just online. So it was very beneficial for Shopify, just their business model overall. Then 2021 revenue uh, was 57%, even though the rate of growth declined, but the revenue still increased. But now look at revenue going forward from 2022 to 2023. The rate of growth declined, but still revenue is increasing at a healthy 20%, above 20% for the next three years, right? That is my compounded annual growth rate of 28%. That is my CAGR. So from a metric standpoint, if we just carefully look at revenue, revenue is still growing strong. So this is a plus for the stock, even though it's down 90% from its all-time high, the revenue growth is still there. So this is a check for me. Now let's look at gross profit margins, right? The profitability of the business. So in 2018, 55%, then 54% in 2019, followed by 52% in 2020. Then 2022, 2023, and 2024. 
What does that look like? That's still, uh, look, it's declining. See here, previously, over, it was above 52%. Now it's below 52%. Okay, so they're getting less profitable. But what about EBITDA margin? Okay, here's EBITDA. See here, negative, burning through cash, losing money. But then in 2020, because of the increase in revenue, EBIT, they've reported a positive EBITDA. So that is positive for the business. Then in 2021, their EBITDA margin increased 7.9%. But then look at 2022, less than 1%. But then they recover 5.6% and then 8.8%. 8 so going forward, the financial profile for Snapchat, when looking at EBITDA, it's going to improve. So their EBITDA margins will continue to improve, which means more cash flow for the business. That is a positive. And then, of course, the bottom line, net income and earnings per share. Same picture, same story, but it's in 2023 that things really begin to look more profitable for Shopify. So going forward, the outlook, okay, from a financial standpoint, it's positive. I mean, they still have double-digit revenue growth. EBITDA margin is expanding. Their earnings per share, their bottom line number is growing double digits. So going forward, the financial profile looks strong, at, at least from what I'm looking at right here, looking at these numbers. Why is the stock down 90%, right? Is this a buying opportunity? Has the market punished this stock um, too negatively or, or, or severely down, given that it was one of the best performing stocks? Uh, the, end, the short answer to that is yes. The short answer to that, Shopify has been punished severely. And not just Shopify, but many high growth tech stocks uh, have been punished severely. But when we take a step back and analyze the financial picture for Shopify, this is positive. This is strong. They're still going to continue to grow. So again, this might be a buying opportunity, but of course, I want to look at my valuation. I need my valuation and my financial analysis to coincide with my thesis. I need the data to back up my thesis before I make an investment decision. Okay. So the next step that I want to take is looking at historical trading multiples. Here it is right here. Um, we are looking at EV over total revenues, okay? And you can see that EV over total revenues mimics the stock. See here, the stock price mimics their total EV over sales multiples. Right now, historically, if we take the amount of time that the stock has been public, you can see that the multiple is trading right near the lows, okay? So the high of the EV over sales multiple is up here, 71 times, okay? The medium is 19 times, and then the low is 6.7. So from a trading multiple standpoint, using sales multiple, this stock is trading at the low, folks. The last time it did this was back in 2016, okay? And remember, I keep referencing to the mean reversion strategy, which means that ultimately a stock will revert back to its median trading, uh, historical trading range, whether it's sales, whether it's EBITDA or whether it's PE. So right now it's trading right below its medium. There's gonna come a time where Shopify will revert back up to around 19X sell uh, total enterprise value over sales. And that would mean that the stock will go increase 100%. So just looking at historical sales multiple, I will say that the stock is trading at its low and it's probably a time to buy when you're simply looking at this metric. This is just one metric that I am using. I like to look at multiple metrics, okay? And remember, the last time I did this was back in 2016. Then we got into a uh, lower interest rate cycle in 2020. And then that provided all the market liquidity that the stock market needed in order to make this stock go up over 500%, okay, in a very short period of time. So these are the things that you need to be aware of and position your portfolio to ride the next wave to the upside. Very, very important, okay? The next multiple that I want to look at, which I have right here, right next to it, is EBITDA multiple. Now, look at the EBITDA multiple. We don't have too much data 
on their historical EBITDA because the company has been losing money. They have been burning through a lot of cash. And just recently, we started to get some numbers on an LTM EBITDA basis. And look at this, 176 times. The medium, 200 times on an EBITDA basis. So these numbers are essentially, as we like to call in the industry, out of whack. I cannot value this business on an EBITDA basis when it's trading over 100 times. That's like to say, if someone buys this company at 176 times EBITDA, that means you're going to make money 176 years from now. That's how I interpret this when you're looking at this. Why? Because the enterprise value of the business divided by your EBITDA just tells you how much the market is paying for those cash flow that the business is generating. And EBITDA, it's an approximation to how much operating cash flow the company is generating. So if you have an enterprise value of one and you have an EBITDA of one, that means the market is paying one time for those cash flows. If you have an, an enterprise value of 10 and the company's EBITDA, let's say, is five, then the market is paying two times for, those, for that EBITDA or those free cash flow. Okay, so that's how I interpret these numbers so that you can understand it um, a little bit better. So the EBITDA multiple, from my interpretation, this thing is out of whack. So I would focus more on revenue growth. And just again, revenue growth and sales uh, multiple, I can see that they're trading right at that historical low reference point. Can it go lower? The short answer to that is yes. But now I have um, my terrain. I have my line in the sand. I have my benchmarks and reference points that typically institutional investors, fundamental investors, they'll buy the stock when it's trading below their historical enterprise value over revenue, provided that the stock or the company is growing revenue double digit. As long as this company is growing revenue double digit, they have free cash flow, business is expanding, they're willing to be patient and wait two, three, four, five years to ride the next move to the upside where they'll make about 5x, 5x their investment. But the key variable here is time. And you also have to be patient. Okay. So that's how I interpret their sales multiple, looking at their historicals. Okay. So this is another reference point that I'm looking at. Uh, in terms of uh, preliminary valuation, right? Right here is now me applying sales multiple valuation. But before I go through this exercise, before I come up with my own price target, let me show you the level of analysis that our analysts put together to determine if the stock is overvalued or undervalued. Okay. First, they had to build an entire financial statements model, right? They're projecting the cash flows of the business over a nine year time frame. Okay. Here's the cash flow statement. And I want to take a quick look at free cash flow. Look at the free cash flow that this business is generating, right? This year, 2022, they were expected negative. The last two years, they were positive. And then going forward, the rate of growth for free cash was still growing. So this is healthy. And I actually like to see this continue to grow year over year. So let's see. Yep, it's going to continue to grow. So this is positive. And in addition to this, then you run different scenarios, okay? You have your discounted cash flow analysis, and on a split-adjusted basis, here's what the DCF results were, right? Uh, so the stock should be trading based on the DCF that our analysts put together. The stock should be trading between $123 and $190 a share. So the level of unlevered free cash flow that the business is generating means that the current stock price should be within this range. And as of today, what was the close of Shopify? Let me quickly pull up the stock uh, price right here, $35. Okay, $35. So if I come back to my graph and I say the stock right now, current share price, current share price, I'm just gonna round, $35, right? What is the potential upside, potential return? Okay, from the low standpoint, and then on the high standpoint, look at that. It's exactly what I just said when we were looking at the historical sales multiple. Okay, so if you believe these numbers, if you trust the DCF and the assumption that you are running through your DCF, this is a potential upside, minimum 
254% upside on Shopify stock. However, you need to have or you need to be in the right market environment where tech is back in favor. And right now, tech is not in favor, but you can slowly begin to accumulate your position. You can scale in. Don't go in uh, with, with, with uh, your entire size. Maybe start with 20% of your entire size. So for example, if you want to buy 1,000 shares, don't go all in all at once. Buy 200 shares and wait. Maybe six months from now, buy another 200 shares. Another six months from now, buy another 200 shares. But when you're buying, you are waiting for the quarterly results of the company. You also want confirmation from the earnings of the business. And I typically like to tell our student, the earnings report, it's like their report card, if you will. Okay, you're evaluating their performance. But if you take this DCF, the stock is undervalued just based on this DCF, okay? Uh, let me take a quick look here at comps. Comps valuation, here it is. And this is all on a split adjusted basis. Okay, so comps... Let me just remove this, okay? So here's comparable company analysis on a split adjusted basis. So the stock based on this valuation should be trading between 36 and $54, okay? So this was before the split adjusted and this is after they split their stock, which means every shareholder that had one stock will now have 10 shares in Shopify. That's essentially what a split, adjust, uh, split adjusted or when a company does a, a stock split, that's essentially what it means. It makes the share price more attractive, it's cheaper, and it increases the liquidity of the stock. That's all. So right now, if we use the same example that we did for the DCF, right? I'm just going to take this here. Pace. Okay. What is the potential upside on the low end? All right. So my comps is telling me Four to 56% is potential upside on the stock if we're only focusing on comp valuation methodologies, trading multiples, okay? And then the football field, well, actually, let's see, institutional ownership. So here's the institutional ownership that was provided for this analysis. Morgan Stanley has 5.8 million shares, okay? Then you have Billy... Gitford and Co. 5.3 million shares. These guys sold 77,000 shares. Okay. Uh, and then we're seeing here more institutional investors. Okay. So these guys have a ton of stock. They have a ton of stock. Here's ARC, very famous. Okay. ARC, they bought more. So ARC holding, they're buying more. Okay. So here you can see who are the institutional players buying and selling shares. Um, just based on this, let me take the net amount of this. This is from 1231, 2021. Okay. Let me see here. Same thing. Okay. So if we look at this, if we use this report, we can see that more institutional investors actually acquire shares. And this is the top. This is usually the top what? This is the top 20. So Shopify top 20 investors, when you look at their 20F report for Q4 2021, and in some cases, some instances, Q1 for 2022, the net amount is positive. So more investors were accumulating shares than selling shares. So all of the people that really wanted to exit out of the stock have, have probably already exited, right? Let's go come back here. So most of the institutional investors that wanted to exit the stock, many of them started probably taking profit up here. And then you have the snowball cascading effect, which may also include the index funds, high growth portfolio managers, other um, uh, value maybe investors or tech investors. So I believe many of those guys have probably liquidated. And now you're going to get a wave of investors that are just going to start to accumulate shares right here when tech is not in favor and when tech gets into favor again, watch out because the stock could definitely start another major bull run where the stock would be up anywhere between 200 to 400%, right? So 
you got to pay attention to these cycles, guys. You have to understand these market cycles because you're buying at an entry level where the downside is limited. You have limited downside probably from here after the stock has declined 90%. Um, but you need a company that is still growing revenue, cash flow positive, and also has institutional shareholder behind it, institutional sponsorship. This is very important uh, to, to also understand. Lastly, let me pull up here the football field. Here's a football field valuation range from our analysts, price target. Again, all of this needs to be split adjusted. So let me come down here and add split adjusted, right? Split adjusted, right? 10 to one, that was the split. So I'm simply just gonna take the share price divided by 10. There it is, right? And we know that the stock right now is around $35. So again, it's outside of this valuation range. So when I go back to this, now you can understand how the intern came up with this analysis. So the stock is outside our low valuation range, which tells me again, the stock is undervalued. So let me come back now and do my own preliminary analysis right here, okay? So how does this work? We're using sales multiple. We're using this metric to value the stock. So what do we need? We need revenue, okay? We need sales multiple, okay? And you can see up here that I have different cases. I have my base case scenario, my bear case scenario, and my bull case scenario. Right now, I'm gonna run the base case scenario. Where am I getting the base case scenario from? Well, the base case scenario is giving us a multiple of 6.7X. Where do I get that 6.7 times multiple? Well, this is coming from our comparable company analysis. This is what the market is currently paying for the stock, that 6.7. And the conclusion is, what happened if the market continues to pay 6.7 times over the next three years? That's the assumption that we're making here in our preliminary valuation. Can we keep this multiple constant? And remember that 6.7 X is right at the historical lows. It's right at the historical lows of the stock, right? So this is probably the lowest it can go. However, in my preliminary analysis, I have a bear case where I am giving the stock a 20% discount, right? A 20% haircut from the current base. So can it go to 5.4? Time will tell. The upside case is my bullish case where the stock would appreciate and the market would change its perspective. Tech is back into favor. They're realizing that the financial profile in the growth picture for Snapchat, uh, not Snapchat, uh, Shopify, keep confusing stocks here. <laughs> um, for Shopify, it is attractive. You're not getting this type of growth, this type of financial picture from many tech stocks. So this is one that will probably continue to grow over the next five years. And portfolio managers will need to start to accumulate shares in Shopify again. And that's when the next cycle begins. So then what would be the target sales multiple? Well, that's up to you, right? We can come back here to a historical sales multiple and we can say, well, maybe it would revert back to the mean, right? Or it's median, which is 19 times. So maybe the upside case should be 19X. So I'm going to come back here to my preliminary valuation and I'm going to hard code 19X. That's my bull cycle right there. 19x. So let's run case number one, the base case. So how do we calculate our implied share price target? For those of you that are in the analyst program, this is technical. Take your projected 2022 sales, multiply it by your sales multiple. That gives you an enterprise value. Then subtract your net cash. Okay. Where am I getting this net cash? I'm getting this net cash directly from their balance sheet. Many of you guys can open up the 10K, 10Q. Shopify is a Canadian company. So for a Canadian company, you will be looking at the 20F or the 40F form. Okay. Their total debt. Okay. 
I'm getting it directly also from the balance sheet. And most of this data is provided from uh, Cap IQ. I calculate my net debt. I adjust my enterprise value by extrapolating net debt and I get my implied equity value. You divide your equity value by shares outstanding and here is your implied share price using the base case scenario. We get a range in 2022 of $34 to maybe $56 if we're looking and taking into account 2024 revenue. And look at the potential upside on the stock, right? If we take a look at where are we getting the share price from, we're getting the share price from our comps. And this is saying July 27. But in reality, if we look back at the chart, the close today is 35. Let's just confirm this quickly. We could pull up the data from Yahoo Finance. I think it's a really good source to get your information. Okay, so we go to Yahoo Finance. We type here Shopify. Here we go. $35.24. So I'm going to come up here and change this to $35.24. Come back to my preliminary valuation. There it is. And you can see that at the low end, the stock is already there, right? It's probably as cheap as it will get. And then the upside could be $56 using, again, the base case where the stock is trading at 6.7 times EV over sales, or the market is paying 6.7 times the company's revenue, okay? That is on the base case scenario. On the bear case, which means, you know, the stock goes down another 20%, scenario number two, you're looking at a potential decline of 19%, right? So the stock will go to $28. That's like a screaming buy. And then the upside would be $45. For those of you that are in the analyst program, you have access to our stock investing course. You know that if you have a company that is growing over 20% year over year, the market will be paying a much higher multiple than what I'm pricing in, in this example, okay? And if we look at our best case scenario where tech is back in favor, the Federal Reserve begins to lower interest rates, and there's a lot of liquidity on the market. And then we begin another market cycle where tech is leading the market. That is my bull case. Scenario number three. And there it is. Boom. That is the scenario where the stock can definitely increase more than 200%, potentially $150 price target. Okay. And that would bring you almost right back up to the all time highs. That could bring you right back up to the all time highs. But that means you will probably have to hold this stock for maybe three, four, or five years to experience that life cycle. But hey, you're going to be up three or four, maybe five times your money, right? Where you don't have to even think about it. It's a no-brainer because this is a company that has a strong financial profile. It is still growing. It's profitable, generating free cash flow, and it's still attractive from a valuation standpoint. You have limited downside in this investment opportunity. So this is how I'm interpreting the stock folks. So I think the worst case scenario has already been priced in, especially on a sales multiple standpoint. Um, but of course, you have to do your own homework. Make sure that you go to the company website, right? And of course, read their investors relation sections, right? Go to shopify.com. I'm going to walk you through this example right here right? Uh, Shopify, shopify.com, right? You go to the website. Where do you find investors relation information? All the way at the bottom. See here, uh, where do we have it? Support, Shopify, there it is. Investors. Every publicly traded company has this section. So do your own homework. Don't be lazy. Spend 10 minutes. Read their most recent quarterly report. This is related to COVID, which was reported. Ah, that's right now. Latest Shopify reported second quarter earnings. There it is. That's right now. You could pull this up and read the report, right? See how much did they grew revenue? Total revenue for the second quarter grew 16%. Okay. How is the stock trading? 
So I am going to pull up right here real time just to see how the market is reacting to this news. So let me see if I can pull up Yahoo Finance to see how the stock is doing right now in the after hours, right? Let me see. So the news rebound, okay, Shopify source 12% tech despite weaker earnings outlook, but the stock rallied, okay? Let me pull up my real-time quote. And mark this, folks, because you might probably be looking at the low for Shopify. Okay, Kathy Wood trades the new Shopify Coinbase. Okay, okay, less than, eh, just 1%. That's not moving the needle much. But what I really want to see is how the stock perform once I open up my quote. Here it is. So let me take a look at this screen. And let me convert this to daily time frame. And let me add, of course, corporate actions. There it is. Boom. Here it is. There it is. Okay. So the company reported earnings. Guys, this is very technical. And it gives you an indication of what the big institutional investors are doing. Okay. So I just walked you through fundamental analysis valuation. Okay. Now I'm walking you through what institutional traders are looking at when they're accumulating shares for, for Shopify. So right now, they reported earnings. Look at the amount of volume. Almost 80 million shares were traded this single day. The stock didn't go down. The stock actually increased on this day, right? July 27, right? 11%. You could look at the print up here. So the stock was up 11% on weaker than expected earnings, and the stock is reacting positively. So you have earnings that did not meet expectations. Basically. They underperform, but the stock is doing positively. Think about it. What's happening here? Institutional investors are accumulating shares. Like, guys, that's 79.8 70, million shares traded today. If you really want to see the footprint of the big boys, let me share this on a 15-minute time frame. Boom, there it is. Look at that. In the first two hours of the trading day, Someone came in and bought about 33 million shares. Do the math. What's let's just round 30 million shares times $30. If you take, I mean, th there's different ways I used to calculate this. Guys, that's about a billion dollars. Some institutional investor came in and bought a billion dollars worth of stock. Think about that. Why are they buying a billion dollar worth of stock right now when they reported earnings? And if you just look at the headline news right here from Yahoo Finance, what was it, right? Shopify rebounds despite June quarter loss, revenue miss, but the stock ended up higher. Here's another one. Shopify sourced 12% on tech rally despite weaker earnings outlook. What is that telling you? These are the type of headlines that you want to see during a market bottom, okay? People are buying weaker earnings. And it's not, you know, regular average retail investor. No, these are institutional guys. And you see the print right there. So let me zoom out to a one-year time frame and look at the accumulation of shares right here and down here. So back in May of this year, let me see if I can do this easier for you to see, right? Here, huge institutional buyer. And now here on earnings big institutional buyer. So this might be the bottom, folks. This might be the bottom of Shopify this month, July 2022. This could probably be the bottom of Shopify. There it is. So for those of you that have a longer term outlook and you want to start nimbling some and you have a five-year outlook on this stock, there it is. This is your opportunity uh, to probably start coming in and buying. Based on all of the analysis that I'm looking at, this stock is undervalued. It has been beaten down severely. And this could be the time to potentially accumulate shares and, and start looking um, for a three to five year holding period. Okay. So that is my conclusion based on my own analysis. And of course, I had our own student analyst doing the entire analysis, as you're seeing right here. All right. So with that being said, I'll open it up to any questions that you may have.
in case this was a little bit too technical um, or if there's something else that you want me to look at, now is your time. Uh, let's see here. Abraham, is there a way I can get the... Re yes, Abraham, uh, we're recording this session. We're going to publish this on our YouTube channel. And for those of you that are in our analyst program, of course, we're going to publish this on our community news feed. Okay. Um, any other questions relating Shopify? Now is your time to ask questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ulysses, how's it going, buddy? Okay. What sector does good during rising interest rates? Okay. Uh, you know, that's a good question, Ulysses. And actually, to answer that question, I am going to refer back to our platform so that you can see where to find this information. Okay, so I'm just going to log into our platform because that's a really good question. And there's several ways to give you the answer to this question. Number one, training modules, fund uh, business fundamentals. Okay, there is a performing due diligence. And if you click on performing due diligence, I do yeah, have yeah. I do have a slide right here where I map out the economic cycle. See right here? There it is, right? So if you go to Business Fundamental Ulysses and under Performing Due Diligence, 27 minutes and 52 seconds, you'll find that answer, right? And this is not perfect, by the way, but at least it gives you an indication of what to anticipate during economic cycles. So right now, as we were going through recession, right? Or we, you know, we might be entering into a recession. What does better, right? Well, typically commodity related stocks, industrial related stock, healthcare does better. And you can go and find the ETFs that will give you the stocks that make up those ETFs. So take a big picture view. Okay. And then start looking at those individual sector. And that will kind of give you an idea as well. But again, this is not perfect. Things are always changing um, along the way, but this will help you answer your question. So that's number one. And number two, if you go back to our stock investing course, okay, module number six, I believe is stock market sentiment. Module number six of the stock investing course. If I fast forward, you need to adopt this top-down analysis. And of course, let me see if I have it over here. You need to understand, ah, look at that. I even added here as well. Economic data, looking at the big sectors uh, move and market cycles, but you also need to understand this part right here. Let me see if I have it. Sector rotation, money inflow and money outflow. Do I have included right here? There it is. And this. So to give you more insight into understanding the question that you're asking, Ulysses, this is your reference point. So module number six, stock market sentiment, and then go to business fundamentals and look at performing due diligence, right? Within those two, that's an hour. That's an hour of content that will give you a very deep dive analysis into what sectors do better in rise and interest rate cycles. Does that answer your question, buddy? It does? Okay, good, good. Uh, any other questions? No? Nope? All right, guys. Well, look, if there's no other question, then I'll leave it here. We'll make sure to upload this to the platform. Make sure you come back to the news feed. Keep re-watching or replaying these stock analysis videos so that you can do it on your own. And then you can come on our platform and comment. Leave your own comments within our own stock analysis. And then hopefully... Over time, we can have our own market sentiment from analysts in our program that have these professional skills, and then we can cross-reference, have our own consensus, and then be able to rate stocks that we're looking at within our community. Think of this as being you know, Wall Street bets, the professional version, or think of it as being a public fund with trained analysts. That's the big picture. That's the vision. So. Keep learning, keep attending these workshops, understand the skill set so that you can begin to participate and comment on the analysis that we're posting here 
so that we're ready for the next market cycle. And then as a whole, as the entire community goes, we can all make money together. All right, guys. Great. You're welcome. So with that being said, I'll leave it here and I'll see you on the next webinar, which is, I believe it's on AMD. So if you come back over here on our platform, articles, stock analysis workshop series, here's the next one that we're going to be doing. It's going to be on AMD. And I'm actually excited on AMD because semiconductors, it is still a, uh, a cyclical trend to the upside. There's still growth in semiconductors and NVIDIA is one of those leading companies. And we're going to do this analysis and we're going to see if they're under value, over value. Um, and if it's, you know, a, a good time to, to buy this stock, right? Position your portfolio for the next move to the upside. All right, guys, I'll leave it here. I hope you found value in this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.